okay so as an example we are trying to solve the contains duplicate two problem now this is a very popular lead code problem that has been asked in some of the popular companies like amazon facebook adobe microsoft uber google bloomberg airbnb and plenty so these are all tech giant companies who love asking this question so that is why i considered this one let's try to see the problem statement the problem statement is actually quite simple and this is a lead code easy problem and also a very well like problem on lead code Basically, we are given an integer array called nums or we are going to denote it as n that contains array values. We are also given a value k and k can be anything like 1, 2, 3, 4, any single integer value. So, suppose k is equal to 3. Now, we need to return true if there are two possibilities. Uh, the first possibility is there exist any two values i and j that are uh, exactly same. So, if there, there, can, there exist two duplicate values in the array, and the second portion is that the difference between i and j so i and j refers to the index positions of every single value uh, inside the given array so the index position should be actually less than the value of k let's try to understand this with few examples so suppose our given input n is equal to 1 2 3 uh, 1 5 if this is the input we are given and we are given the k value to be 4 if this is the case uh, does it satisfies these two properties so first let's see okay so we need to check that between the window 4 there needs to be two duplicate values currently we can see that there exists a duplicate value 1 and 1 over here let's see the index position 0 and 3 so if we do the difference 0 minus 3 so basically we need to do the absolute difference so the answer is going to be 3 3 is actually less than the value of 4 which means this one currently contains the duplicate value that is not far away from four elements from each other so in this case we are going to return true let's try to understand it with one more example suppose our given n is equal to 1 2 3 1 0 something like this and our given k value is equal to 2 if this is the case again same scenario we have the values located at index position 0 and index position 3 that contains the same value but current k value is equal to 2 and if we uh, do the difference between these two values the current difference between indices is 3 meanwhile our given k is equal to 2 which means in this case we need to return false because there does not exist any two duplicated values that are two steps away from each other or between two elements of each other so this is the whole ask now let's see that what is going to be the simplest approach we can take okay so suppose this is the input we are given now we let's see the brute force way to solve this problem that we pick any element then we take the we check the next k elements so in this case currently we are allowed to check up until this point so between these portions we check that whether 0 is present in any other value or not if 0 is not present we can define that 0 would not be any would not be a duplicated entry in any of the uh, window because we are strictly told that we can only check next three elements so in this case we can get uh, rid of 0 because 0 is not present same way we are going to check for value number 5 so currently value number 5 is located at index number 1 which means we have the ability to compare between these portions so again for value number 5 we are going to check this value this value and this value and bingo we find value number 5 so we can return true in this case because element number 5 exists and the difference is less than 3 but this is like a very inefficient approach why inefficient approach say for an example this entry does not contain any duplicated values and all the values are unique and at the same time we so what would what we would do is for every single element we would compare it with the next three elements and we would keep on repeating the same process until we reach to the end of our loop and that would be an inefficient approach because the time complexity would be we go of uh, n so n is the total number of elements multiplied by k and this is not no, what we want we want something more efficient so let's see uh, a more efficient and better approach a better approach is that we know that for any single value we need to check in the remaining portion whether that value is present or not so currently we can break it down in us in this sequence so currently we can create a window of window like this 0 and then 5 to 7 currently we are at this position number 0 now we need to check that whether 0 exists in the remaining three entries or not first approach is is to do binary search so for binary search what we would need to do is we would need to sort this given input and if we sort this input array the sorted result is going to look like this 0 
2, 5 and 7 and then all we need to do is check any two consecutive values if we identify that there exists like a back to back entries that contains the same value then we can return true if it does not contain then we can move on to the next window and again in the same way we would repeat the same process for this next window that is concurrently comprised of the values 5, 2, 7 and 3 and again okay so let me fix this one so this one should be 5 not 7 and 5, 2, 5, 3 so again if we sort this window in this case the answer we are going to get is 2, 3, 5, 5 and we found two back to back values that contains the same same uh, value so in this case we can return true but the thing is even this approach is also not very efficient because uh, if we see time complexity in this case the time complexity is going to be big O of n then log of k why log of k because for any given input we will actually have to sort this and sorting it cost us a lot of time and energy and uh, this is also this is better than the brute force approach but still there there can be improvements made so what is one improvement we can make and again remember we are using sliding window because we know that we need to do this in any subsequent values and we need to find the answer so definitely you understand by seeing the problem that why we need to use the sliding window but let's see that what would be the improvement we can make first thing we need to check is that in the binary search approach what we had to do is we need to check that whether in the remaining portion does the same element exist or not and also at the same time we were considering that every single time we need to create a new window we would have to do the entire uh, sorting calculation again so we need a data structure that can very quickly like get rid of elements and add new elements at the same time very quickly search that whether the existing element exists or not and the wonderful answer for this uh, but this type of scenario is a hash map so we can create like a hash map or a hash set inside our input and hash map and hash set are wonderful at doing two things like doing the search and remove and input operations in big o of one time so hashing is really good in that also at the same time it does not allow duplicate entry so no duplicate duplication is allowed which means we can identify duplicate entries very quickly very efficiently in any any sort of hashing input so we are going to use this property combined with sliding window approach to solve this problem in the most efficient manner let me quickly show you. so first we are given the value of k which means we are going to create our window so currently we let's just create a window of size k okay so starting from value number 0 to value number 5 and then we will have all the values 0 5 2 and uh, okay let me just put down some different value over here and let me put 5 over here okay and then this is going to be 4 okay so this is the these are the current values at the moment uh, we are going to initialize a hash map now inside this hash map we are going to store two items we are going to store the value as the key and we are going to store the indices uh, based on its value inside the hash map so first we are going to check okay this one is value number 0 and currently the index values are 0 1 2 3 so 0 is not present in the hash map we will add entry 0 over here and its index value 0 as well again 5 is also not present so we will add entry 5 over here and its index value 1 over here 2 is also not present so 2 and 2 and again 4 is not present so 4 and uh, the index value is 3 so we add these 4 entries in our hash map at the same time we would we can check that currently since the value of k is equal to 3 we already added 4 elements and still uh, we were not able to find any duplicate entries which means we will have to update our uh, window so in order to update our window rather than getting rid of all the items what we can do is we can just get rid of the first element and then we can just shift our window to include one more entry inside our input and that is going to be value number 5 for the index value position number 4 so again we add 5 over here at the same time since we got rid of the first index value we are going to also get rid of that inside our hash map so we are going to get rid of the first entry and currently we have three entries again we will try to check that whether 5 exists or not so we will try to input 5 inside our hash map but we would be able to immediately find that 5 is already present as a value inside our hash map and immediately we can return true saying that this contains duplicate 
inside a k window and see what we did is that initially our window was consisting of this value number 0 we got rid of the only 0th value we kept the remaining values inside our window and we simply added a new value inside our hash map and then we were, we were able to immediately identify that whether this is the correct response or not and say for an example if somehow this value is not value number 5 this is value number 11 or something else this does not contain any duplicate entries what would happen is that every single time we would get rid of the last element from our hash map and we would keep on adding new values to our window and eventually we would reach to the end of our uh, input and if we don't find any answer we can simply return false in this case so if we see time complexity in this scenario the time complexity is actually going to be big of n only and uh, since for this case we used to we had to use a hash map of size k we the space complexity is going to be big o of k but this is a very wonderful and beautiful approach to solve this problem so that is why the sliding window technique is really powerful because you are already building your solution upon the already calculated computed values you are not doing everything from scratch and uh, that is very powerful in making your uh, inputs more efficient Okay, so for this problem, I'm not going to write the entire code. I'm just going to give you the explanation. So first we are going to initialize our hash set and I mentioned that we can use hash map or hash set anything. In this case, we are using hash set. Now we are going to iterate over the given input array using a for loop. First thing we are going to do is to check that whether our set contains the current value, current ith position of value we are at. If that is the case, we can return true immediately. If that is not the case, we would add that entry to our hash set. At the same time, we would check that if the current size of hash set, if that is greater than our given input k, if that is the case, then we need to remove the earliest entry inside our hash map and we can calculate that using the number of ith index that we are currently at minus the value k. And then if we remove that value from the hash set, our hash set is only going to contain uh, only the k elements. And then we can keep on repeating the same process until the very end. If we haven't returned true by then, we can return false in the end. And this is going to be the whole, so whole solution. Let's try to run this code. Seems like our solution is working as expected. Let's submit this code. And our code runs decently efficiently compared to a lot of other solutions. And uh, I would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there. Thank you.